comes to upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and to the age all ages. Amen. Uh, today is the first day of the Coptic year in the calendar, as we read in the Synexarium. Um, and it's it's not that often, maybe once every seven years, that we have the actual um, New Year's Day readings read on Sunday. Um, <clears throat> so um, we actually don't read the first Sunday of two, but the first day of, of the Blessed Month. And Usually in the beginning of a ministry or an event, um, like the rite of reception of a priest coming back, or the bathing prayer of, of a newborn, um, or in the early days, um, the first gospel in the matrimony, we, uh, or the first day, for the first uh, hour of the day, we read from the gospel according to St. John chapter 1. <clears throat> this is in the beginning was the word. Right? Um, but instead for the new year, the church decided to read a different passage, um, from the beginning, or relatively the beginning of the Lord's ministry, um, after the Lord is baptized and um, goes into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, fasting to be tempted by the devil, um, then he returns actually not to his hometown in Nazareth, but as as St. Luke explains here, to Galilee. Um, <clears throat> and then he goes back to his hometown and describes to them his, his mission statement. Um, and at the, every, at the beginning of every year in our lives or in the beginning of every new service or uh, even the benchmarks that follow that, um, we need to take a, another look as at our mission. At, at the, and, and we use the Lord's description here of the mission of the church and especially of, of the, the mission of the Christian. Uh, and we ask ourselves, what is the mission? What are the long-term and short-term goals? Um, who, who am I? Um, what's my target group? Who is the, those that I'm serving? And how do I get the resources that I need? Um, and many people who even are not Christian apply this in, in the workplace or, or um, in their studies. <clears throat> so before we look at our own personal mission, we have to look at the general mission of the Christian, right? Because every Christian has a, the same objective, to attain the kingdom of heaven. Um, but in, in addition to that, every person has been given different gifts and talents and um, a role that they must serve in, in the collective church. <clears throat> so um, when the Lord came to the synagogue in uh, Nazareth, um, as the custom was, um, he was, uh, they brought to him a reading from Isaiah and he selected a passage from Isaiah, and he read it in chapter 61. And it was not coincidental what he read, right? So, uh, he's the uh, one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit who wrote the scriptures. And um, <clears throat> he, he starts at the place where it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh, he has sent the, to he, me to heal the broken heart, to claim liberty to the captives and recovery to the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he goes on and says that today um, this is fulfilled. Based, and one of the only places where he clearly states that he is the fulfillment of the prophecies. And of course, the response was positive or negative at this point. His own city, his own people, um, they rejected him and they were trying to kill him. They tried to throw him off the cliffs. Um, of course, it was not his time. Um, so he did not allow this to happen at this point. But the idea here is that he starts out first by realizing or helping us to realize what is the power by which we do anything. And here he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. Um, many people will say, but... Isn't he one with the Holy Spirit and God the Father? Yes. Then why is he saying this? Why does he need power from the Holy Spirit? Why does he need an anointing? Well, this word anointing means Christ. But <clears throat> um, more in, in detail, as St. Cyril says, um, why does he need to be sanctified? Right? He says he exists as God and as man. As God, he gives the Spirit to all creation. And as man, he receives um, the same Spirit from the God and Father. <clears throat> um, and we'll get further into that with the words of St. Athanasius in a minute, but the whole idea is that the whole purpose of, of this anointing is for our blessing <clears throat> as human beings. Um, 
So then he starts by saying, this is the power that I receive from God by which I will do these things. And what is it? He says, um, well, who the Lord was sent to, the poor, the brokenhearted, the captives, and the blind. And um, again, again, I won't go into details, but St. Cyril says, don't take this just as a literal, but the spiritual. He says, spiritually, we're all poor, brokenhearted, captives, and blind. Whether it's um, in our virtue or our strength, he says, if, if we don't have God, or if we don't have hope, or if we don't have strength to overcome our difficulties, or if we are brokenhearted because of um, uh, the inability to resist the, our passions and desires, then we are in this category. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so, we'll, again, we'll get back to that in a minute. And then finally, he says, um, after he has been received after the christian is received power from on high to do good right the last thing is to proclaim pro proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and that's probably one reason why the church selected um this passage <clears throat> um but i think the translation um is not complete here um in 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 the greek it more gives the uh, explanation of the year of grace um, so we consider this year, as well as every year, the year of grace of the Lord. And that's our goal. How can this year be blessed? And how can I feel and experience the grace of God this year and every year following? <clears throat> um, and on top of this, St. Paul uses the same word accepted um, in, in, uh, in the Pauline epistle of today. He says, um, he made him, or God, made, the Father, made Christ him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become righteousness of God in him. And he says, therefore, we should not receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you in the day of salvation, I have helped you. So this accepted time, he says, behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Um, <clears throat> so the idea here is, as the fathers explained, what is the acceptable time? What is the acceptable year? It is now. Um, not just when Christ um, said these words, but all the way until the second coming. Right? Um, and so St. Paul here tells us today, we should not receive the grace of God in vain. We should not receive this new year um, in vain. Um, we don't want to receive it uh, as one monk of the Eastern Church, he says, um, I've heard this divine promise so many times already um, at the start of so many years and I've abused the grace so many times. Hopefully, I'm sure you can relate, right? Um, wasting in sin those opportunities opened for my conversion. But in spite of the accumulation of infidelities, Jesus still renews his offer to me this day. Um, this year, which is starting, can still be for me the year of grace of the Lord. Um, so that's hope, hope, hopeful um, that even though maybe I had many beginnings, but they didn't end as well as I hoped, I still get another chance to renew that beginning. Um, <clears throat> and part of the problem might be because we're not starting properly, right? Um, as the gospel in the Matins was about the Lord saying, no one puts a new patch on an old garment. Right? Sometimes we feel like we just have to do some patchwork in our life, and that should be sufficient. But the, the patchwork does not last, um, and then we have to do it over again. Right? <clears throat> so um, in order for us to have a complete transformation or real change or um, steady growth, we have to fix the foundation. We have to look at the 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 bottom, the, the beginning of, of, of things, and not just superficially um, cover or, or try to make small adjustments in our life. It needs more an adjustment of the heart, not of our actions. <clears throat> um, and so um, newness has to be placed on the firm foundation, and change cannot be cosmetic or superficial, um, or else there is no newness, um, as 
as the church teaches us. Um, so let's just go back to those three points that we were saying um, in, in our life. So when the Lord says, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, well, we as Christians can also the same, say the same thing because we have received the grace of God from the Holy Spirit through baptism, chrismation, and the rest of the sacraments. Right? St. Athanasius says, the Spirit did not descend so that the word might be improved. Christ, um, be, Christ wasn't better because the Holy Spirit came. He's perfect. Right? He says, but that we might be sanctified and receive his anointing. For then it could be asked of us, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwells in you? Right? St. Paul says this in the Corinthians. He's like, don't you know that you're a church? Don't you know that you have the Holy Spirit in you? Don't you know that you should be pure and holy and righteous? Of course, we know this. But he says, when, when the Lord was baptized in the Jordan, we were washed in him and by him. And when he received the Spirit, we were made, we were made worthy to receive the Spirit by him. Okay, So that's why, and I think we've said this before, all of the events and, and especially the, the feasts that happen um, of the Lord are so special because... Since he took our flesh, it has a special meaning and power and experience for each and every one of us who, um, who are united with him uh, spiritually. Um, <clears throat> so then I ask the, the question, as St. Paul says, is the Spirit of God upon me? Have, have I, do I express it or quench the work of the Spirit in my life? Um, do I know that I am a temple of the Holy Spirit? Am I imitating Christ or not? These are the questions that we ask ourselves. Um, like we were saying a couple of weeks ago, to accuse ourselves so that if, if the answer of this question is no, then the mission doesn't work, right? If we don't have any power, we can't do anything, right? <clears throat> so even if, like we, we've all been, even if we receive the power, we have to uh, interact with the power of God or to stir up the spirit that is in us, as St. Paul says. Um, and this happens by the things that we do and we don't do. Um, <clears throat> so um, as um, uh, one, one of the fathers writes, he says, I am poor, perhaps materially, but certainly spiritually, right? I'm captive of my egoism and my sin. I'm blind, for my eyes don't know how to perceive the divine light. I am wounded, perhaps by the external circumstances of my life but much more so by my repeated spiritual failures. And all the time, Jesus is there in front of me, and he offers me deliverance. Like when he said, I am the one who is coming to all of these people to give them deliverance, to give them healing, to give them hope. <clears throat> he says, he himself is the embodiment of all the deliverance and of all forgiveness. If at this moment I accept his work, his salvation, everything becomes new. So the main responsibility of us is just to accept what he is giving to, to us so we say this is the year of the grace so we just our job is to receive the grace not to reject it um <clears throat> it's easy right it's easier said than uh, it's easier said than done but god's work is a lot more complicated and difficult than ours he is the one who gives we receive okay um and uh he says uh, the coming of christ declared that god searches for me runs after me, offers everything for me, declaring that he loves first before I knew him. It is he who desires my peace, salvation, and glory. He wants me to share with him the joyful, glorious heaven. So when I think about what God wants for me and what God is doing for me and has did for me and will always do for me, then that, that encourages me to, to start fresh, to start new, and to receive the grace. <clears throat> um, and not only that, but um, so... Just like Christ was was sent, um, not only to save but also to 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 minister to us and to preach and to liberate us, right? Um, what is my role in this? Right. The first one uh, is the role of every Christian is to, like Saint Paul says, to to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, to be holy, um, to be transformed by Him, to be filled with His light. Um, but also later. After we have this experience, we become a light to others. Um, one, one author says, when a man finds the knowledge and when it sinks into the depth of his being, 
he acquires an inner power that changes him and grants him renewed life. Um, so this is the experience of the person who has been transformed on the inside by the Lord. Um, and it, it lasts if we do it in the right way or if we don't fight against this, this power. <clears throat> um, there's so much more to say about this, but we'll, we'll just try to, to summarize that um, after the Lord said all of this, Right? He, he gave the scriptures back to the attendant and sat down. And everyone had their eyes fixed on him. And um, St. Oh, sorry, Origen, the scholar, um, he says, after he gave the, the scroll to the attendant and sat down, um, and the eyes of all were fixed on him, he says, now too, he's speaking to the congregation, right? on, probably on Sunday, he says, if you want, your eyes can be fixed on the Savior in the synagogue, in this church, he said, in this assembly. When you direct the principal power of seeing in your heart to the wisdom and truth and to contemplating God's only begotten Son, your eyes gaze on the Lord Jesus. Um, he says, blessed is the congregation of which scripture testifies that the eyes of all were fixed on him. We want our eyes this year to be fixed on the Lord, um, whether I'm in or outside of church whether I'm standing in prayer or doing my work. Um, <clears> he <throat> says, how much would I wish that this assembly gave such testimony, the eyes of all fixed on him. I wish that the eyes of all, of catechumens and faithful, of women, men, and children, not the eyes of the body, but the eyes of the soul would gaze upon the Lord Jesus. So this is our goal, is just to fix our eyes on him, um, to stare at him, um, even when we go about do, doing our daily work, this fixing our eyes on him transforms our life because we realize his presence and we ask for his grace and we do his work, not ours. It says, when you look to him, your faces will be shining from the light of his gaze, just like Moses uh, after coming down from the mountain, right? You'll be able to say the light of your face, O Lord, has made its mark on us. Uh, may the Lord give us this light and this power and this transformation during this uh, new year and, and every year after um, until we be with him uh, forever in heaven. Glory be to me now and forever into the age of ages.